much is the girl supposed to take? She's supposed to just sit in the group while the girls have this secret animosity towards her. Well, private animosity towards her because what you can't do is openly say, Diana, I hate you. I want to kick you up your ass because Birdie Gordy is paying more attention than you, than me. Forget about the fact that, yeah, you work harder. You know, you suck more than I do. But I'm still mad at you for, you know, excelling. Okay. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's Looky Looky would be our um, black cold weather turbans, okay? And as usual, all turbans come with a free gift. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember too, y'all, this book, the words are so small that I have to wear readers, okay? But please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it if the YouTube gets it. Child, these lips. Now, let's continue talking about Call Her Miss Ross, the unauthorized biography of Diana Ross by J. Randy Tarot Bear Borelli. I think that's it. After the first reports in the press about the kidnapping, nothing more was ever published about the matter. It was all quieted down by Barry, Cindy said. He had the power to do that, I suppose. Hell yeah. Barry was in Los Angeles when Bobby Teller brought to Motown a group of youngsters calling themselves Jackson 5. Taylor was a Motown artist whose biggest claim to fame should have been his discovery of 10-year-old Michael Jackson, but it was a distinction of which he was robbed. Gordy felt that he needed some sort of promotional hook to introduce Jackson 5 to the public, and his strategy was to associate them with Diana Ross. Diana then hosted a party in honor of Jackson 5 at the Daisy Club in Hollywood. She told the 300 guests, including press members, that she discovered the group while touring with the Supremes. Wearing a British bowler over his Afro-style hair, 10-year-old Michael Jackson explained, I had just about given up hope. I thought I was going to be an old man before being discovered. But along came Miss Diana Ross to save my career. Young Michael was learning about show business hype at a very early age. Y'all was teaching Michael Jackson a lie? Damn, that was the biggest bald-faced lie. Diana later introduced Jackson 5 as a supporting act on the Supreme Show at the Forum in Los Angeles on August 16th. The appearance was followed by the boys' first national audience when she and the Supremes hosted Hollywood Palace in October 1969. Diana thought that would be the end of her involvement with the Jackson 5. But a year later, she would discover that Gordy arranged for little Michael Jackson to move into her house. I'm confused. What is this? Sugar Ray said that the boys was living with him. Okay, or well, some of the boys was living with him. That's why I made the video, uh, Bird of Gordy, why is Michael Jackson living in your house when you got uh, boys, you know, kids. You got Curry over there with Sugar Ray, and Sugar Ray's struggling, okay? But you got Michael Jackson living in your house? 
Was it your house or was it Diana Ross' house? Or was it the house that you bought for Diana Ross? I'm lost. By then, Diana had already relocated to West Coast. By, By then, then, Diana had already relocated to the West Coast. Mary, Cindy, and Barry all had homes in Los Angeles at the end of 1969. Flo was still living in Detroit. Barry arranged for Diana to lease a house in Hollywood Hills as he searched for a permanent home for her. The first order of business, however, was to pull Diana out of the Supremes. The official announcement was made by Motown Press Department in October. Diana had been complaining to Barry that she wanted to make some final decisions about her future career. The fact that Mary and Cindy now seemed to despise her was finally beginning to bother her and she was pressuring Barry to do something about it. How much is the girl supposed to take? She's supposed to just sit in the group while the girls have this secret animosity towards her? Well, private animosity towards her because what you can't do is openly say, Diana, I hate you. I want to kick you up your ass because Birdie Gordy is paying more attention than you, than me. Forget about the fact that, yeah, you work harder. You know, you suck more dicks than I do, but I'm still mad at you for, you know, excelling past me. Okay, so she's supposed to stay in a group that don't like her. Get the get on. Y'all be lunching. And some of y'all be like, I still like Flo. Nobody's telling you not to like Flo or Mary. I still like Flo and Mary. I like all of them. Okay, Diana, Flo, and Mary. Because like the previous commenter said, that we enjoy the Supremes for all the members. Not just because of Diana Ross. I agree with that. But at the same time, I'm not staying nowhere where I'm not wanted. A final appearance on Ed Sullivan's show was scheduled for December 21st, 1969. Wearing gold lame and chiffon gowns with dome and sleeves, the girls sang a fast-paced, exciting melody of their hits. And then someday we'll be together. Sullivan had certainly been good to the Supremes over the years. 12 appearances in all, and this was an appropriate form for their last TV appearance together. I agree. Sullivan announced that Diana will continue her career as a solo star. No mention was made of Mary or Cindy's future. Diana Ross and the Supremes' final appearance took place on January 14, 1970. On stage in the Music Hall of the Frontier Hotel at 11.30 p.m., ventriloquist Willie Tyler scolded his dummy Lester and ripples of laughter spread through the room. In the wings, witnesses recall Diana Ross waited nervously toying with a cigarette. She took a heavy drag, exhaled, and then waved the cigarette from her mouth with a theatrical gesture. The glare of the spotlight made it impossible for her to see beyond the stage and to the audience, but she must have known there was a full house. She dropped the cigarette to the floor and ground in the butt with her high-heeled shoe. Meanwhile, in the dressing room, Mary Wilson and Cindy Birdsong were sharing a bottle of champagne. Before leaving, they took a quick look in the mirror to check their makeup. Long red fingernails fluffed out, then smoothed down elaborate wigs. A glance over the shoulder made sure the back view was right. Now, let me tell you something. They might have been um, celebrating. Let me tell you why, okay? Because according to the Mary Wilson, she was like, oh, okay, this is a new beginning. This is, this is the yeah, yeah, yeah right here. You know, we can already get Diana out. Maybe we can get Flo back, okay? Maybe we can, you know, move forward with a new group. Girl, now is not the time for you to get gumption. You heard me. Now is not the time to stand up to the Barry Gordy girl. You should have did that shit years ago, girl. So you're going to fight for, uh, Sir, uh, what's her name, Jean Terrell, but you didn't fight for Flo? So this is just bad timing. You know what I'm saying? And I know people always want to go back to, oh, that's messed up how they did Murray. Murray, Murray ain't making good decisions right now. Right now, 
you know, until Murray figures out her next step. And there's so many things that she could have did. You know what I'm saying? She she could have worked for The Price is Right, as far as I'm concerned. Murray Wilson could have worked for soap operas. You hear me? They hiring all the damn time. Okay, but I hear them soap opera stars don't get paid no money. But it's still, she would have got a check. And she definitely could have been, you know, hobnobbing with people to put herself in a good position afterwards. You wait till it's over. It's over, bruh. The Supremes is over. Okay, I think they did have one hit after, you know, a spell or whatever, you know, uh, a little bit after the Diana left. Okay, but right now, this is not the time, girl. You crazy. For Murray, this was a no supreme act of will as much as it was the foolishness of a person making an important decision half asleep. And that's final, she concluded. Barry held the phone receiver out at arm's length as though he couldn't believe what he was hearing. There was a frown on his face. Fine then, he said. His voice rose. You're on your own. Someday we'll be together. There were many who saw a parallel in the Gordy Ross legend. When a powerful older man refashioned a young unknown girl into a star. As she rose, he became full of pride and wonder at her energy and ambition, and she fell in love with him. Diana Ross was fiercely ambitious from the beginning. She could just as likely have become a top fashion designer if music and Barry Gordy had not come into her life. But he was there, and a lot of people wondered about their future together. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share the Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Now, remember this. Please. Now remember this, the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Uh, I'm gonna make you love me. Oh, yes, I am.